Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Christian Buddy Podcast. Please do not forget to subscribe or interact with the videos as it helps the channel very much. If you are enjoying the content, please tell your friends and family. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the episode. Peace to you guys. Let's go. Thanks for joining into another episode of the Christian Buddy Podcast. I am now with the amazing Ava. How are you feeling today, Ava? I'm feeling good. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you as well. Who's the, who's the lucky he's the lucky guy? <laughs> My cup of water here. Cup of water. I'm very I'm, <laughs> I'm very envious. Um now let's on a more serious note, you are a pole dancer. Yes, I'm a competitive pole dancer. So I thought before we get into your backstory, I would show the audience a clip of your uh on your instagram so mm. i'm just going to share my screen if hopefully it all works has that come up on your side there yes yes perfect all right so maybe you can give a bit of a a, a narration to this what's going through your mind maybe just a bit of commentary for the audience as well if you mm -hmm. don't mind yep um one it can start from the it starts from a sitting more of a praying pose in the very, very beginning. Um, and it's really about what our society is going through today regarding racial injustice. And I created these, this dance routine because I just was just reading all the, the news, seeing all these videos. And I wanted people to know too that I stand with Black Lives Matter. And along with this routine was my friend singing um, the song Till We Reach That Day, which is from the musical called Ragtime that was reflective of the, like at the turn of the 20th century where they were not it was just like all this racial injustice uh, events going on. And then now here we are in 2020 and it's still reflective of the events yeah. back then as it is today. So I'm like, oh my gosh, there's just not been much change. And I wanted to be up some help somehow. So I actually was matching donations of up to a thousand US dollars to that stood against racial injustice. And yeah, we, we met that mark. And um, I chose this song because just the lyrics in this song was so powerful. And um, even right here, I put my fist up. And so. Yeah. I would love to play the music, but just due to copyright, bloody YouTube, I, I can't. Oh, but... it's my friend singing. So oh. it's not by any... Um, it's not like some published song work out there. I'm okay. pretty sure you can, you can play the music. It's really actually like a really sad piece because I was feeling sad. And I go back into my praying position. So, I mean, here, what the lyrics was just saying is like, oh Lord, I pray till we reach that day. And so, um, and then another, an earlier lyric was, we'll never get to heaven until we reach that day. So I'm just thinking like, yeah, I mean, this is not right to be living in this type of world. So yeah. I just felt like it was such an impactful song. I wanted to make a a dance that expressed my sadness um, yeah. for for these recent events. Wow, that's yeah. I take my hat off to you. That's a very honorable thing to do. And speaking of 
pole dancing. I mean, I'm not experienced in that area, but most of it is about expressing yourself as, as what you've done. And yeah, it's, it's almost like a connection between, yeah, I guess self-expression and uh, how would you put it? Like uh, it's like dance almost, but it's not quite the same way. So Mm, yeah, I kind of think of it as emotions put into body movement. Mm. And you need to be pretty strong as well, don't you? Like you need to have a lot of core strength and a lot of flexibility, and, do yeah, you? You you can develop that as you practice a routine. Um, yeah. In the beginning of this routine, I was not had not even the least um, enough endurance to do the whole routine all the way through. So. I choreographed it that way. I didn't want to change anything about it because I'm like, oh my God, I really, I feel most closest to this routine for this song. So I just kept practicing and practicing. Yeah. And then through that, it trains your body, trains your muscle memory. And then in the end, I was able to use this for the competition piece and also be proud enough for it to be um, like dedicated to where I want it to be. So I'm curious from a self-development note, your, your competition and ha has that changed your mind or has that, do you feel a different person going through the fire of the competition or do you, do you mind expanding on that, please? Yeah, I feel like I've definitely grown in my character. I feel more self-confidence because I've been competing in pole dancing because it, it's just like the most nerve wracking thing to right before going on stage yeah. where I'm almost kind of like in a one piece bikini suit because you need a lot of skin contact to con to stick to the pole. And okay. as your routine gets harder or maybe more advanced then you to do more moves, it's, requires like different costumes and I see my costume like develop over time and then to be like that alone on stage in front of like the public audience and three judges down below who has these rubrics of oh does does it does it explain her storyline how's the execution of the moves what's how's her flexibility like all of this encompass it's like, I feel like my anxiety is going to jump out of my skin and <laughs> pose competition. It's like, whew, I went through that thunderstorm, but I also had so much fun on stage. And after, after putting myself through that, I'm like, okay, if I can do that, I can do so many other things. So it just, just builds that Absolutely. confidence, competition after competition. Yeah. It's amazing to see. And you speak of anxiety now. I'm just curious. From what's your definition of of anxiety? It's like this mood of like all my like my blood's just gonna like burst out because it feels like there's like a rush going through you're my whole settled. body. Would you would you say you're not settled? You're not grounded. I don't or feel grounded. No. No. Yeah. Because I mean. How would you, I mean, sorry, sorry, go ahead. What were you saying? Sorry. I was going to ask you what your definition of or anxiety is mm. or how would you feel? Mm. You I don't, I, look, to be honest, I don't feel like a very anxious person and I've mm. never understood because I like to do a lot of breathing meditation and uh, I feel like that helps me. I, I do the Wim Hof method. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to give a shout out to the Wim Hof method. Uh, a lot of shout cold. out. Shout out. Woo um, <laughs> so look, I don't know. Um, that's why I want to get, it's kind of a, a, a loaded question. I'm asking all my guests because every, mm. I feel like everyone goes through a different journey in life. And um, this is why I'm a big advocate for meditation because, mm. you know, it's good to, to be grounded every day, you know, five minutes a day, you know, we're, we're grounded and we're, and we're accomplishing great things. So yeah, that's right. I, I see actually backstage when um, a lot of us, I mean, we all feel, we're all feeling it. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. Yeah, it would. a bunch of me and a bunch yeah. of other girls backstage or, and not many guys, but um, when there's a uh, male competitor, then them too, we're all like, 
oh my god like every all the the months of work that we've been training for has come up to this moment and wow. some people are just listening to their own routine song to calm them down so they can visualize it like run their through routine visually and some people are meditating and listening to meditative music uh for myself i'm just like doing jumping jacks trying to like <laughs> get that energy out of me yeah. um so yeah I, yeah we all go through our own journey and i think like whatever I hope we all find the thing that works for us. I think meditative really works well, though, getting in that zone. Mm. I definitely recommend it for anyone listening at home. And mm -hmm. yes, yeah, it's. I think competition is is a different is a different thing altogether. It's high pressure, and the spotlight's on you, and. Because I just a bit of background into myself, I play some competitive tennis. So I guess it's not quite the same because the spotlight isn't on me. I'm, I'm just kind of playing my shots as I normally do. But yeah, I can I can only there's imagine still anxiety. I yeah, there's, there's there's still a bit of angst. There's still a little bit of you know performance anxiety and all, all those sort of things. But uh, I mean that's part of life, I think. And for me, I feel like it's living. You're actually living life. I mean, if, if if you were to not have any form of anxiety, any form of pressure in your life, you would almost be like a potato. You would almost be like, um, am I even a, am I even alive now? Like, what what am what am I? You know, if I feel like it's sometimes it's good just to shock your body into these crazy emotions and 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 feel the roller coaster of life because otherwise, are we even living? Like, what's this? Otherwise, we'd just be in bed all day and doing nothing with our life. You know, so at least, you know we're doing something with our life. So that's very good to hear. Yeah. And um, speak about self-development. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, on self-development. How has, because this podcast is all about self-development, becoming your best self. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I say, I mean, I started pole dancing. Um, I've done that for two and a half years now. And I, I'd say I, I mean, in the beginning, pre pole dancing, I just thought of myself just just seeing chronologically of what I how I thought of myself. I mean, it's like this unsexy, lanky person, and um, I saw this student showcase where this girl just easily climbed the pole. I'm like, oh, one day, like I can maybe climb a pole, and um, and I was like, oh, that's all I want to accomplish it when I when I take a pole dancing class. And then um, it, it's like, when I took my first pole dancing class, I felt even more awkward because I don't know how my body uh, just physically works with the pole. And like, there's this aerial, like aerodynamic to it. I'm like, oh, now this whole thing is new. I already couldn't feel myself, feel comfortable with myself on the ground. Now I am, off the ground but I feel even more awkward and but then that's where like the journey begins and that's where like everyone starts but and then for me I was like okay well I know that I love performing and there's this competition in three and a half months after my first pole dancing class I just like I just love performing so I'm gonna train up for it and yeah. compete in like this thing and be in front of everyone so then I mean as I practice I nail like the little things even before nailing a trick it's like just even not even climbing gracefully but just getting up the, the metal stick at all and then I'm like oh wow I, I got up like three feet high this is great okay and then I train up where I um, I gained some muscle and also self-confidence. I'm like, oh, wow. Like I, I did that. I didn't make it look hard, even though it is hard to me. And then my teacher was like, okay, you're doing great, but you show like you're in pain on your face. Actually, you move gracefully, but if you just smile. It actually can work together. You, you don't look like you're in pain if you just don't show it. I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. And then, um, I just smile through it. I'm like, oh my God, like this is getting easier and easier over time. And then 
I was, I had the, that first competition and as I like gained new tricks into my, my list of tricks here, then I just gained more confidence. And now I'm thinking, okay, I, I don't think of myself as this like super graceful person, but this I'm definitely <laughs> not as, thank you. I'm definitely not as awkward as I was before. And actually, if I could even express about um, one particular routine, it really defines of how I kind of think of myself my whole life. Uh, one routine was just like I wore uh, suspenders, a uh, 90s spinner hat, big glasses. Wow. And it was just this, like, because I felt like I am this dorky, awkward person. So I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I want to like embody that though. I don't want to be yeah, that's cool. Like ashamed of that. And this is kind of like the fun part of who I am. So, and I was just like pretending to be clumsy on stage. And then the audience laughed with me and it was a really fun routine. I'm like, yeah, yeah. this is, this is just all part of my, like it, I didn't realize how much self-confidence pole dancing would give me, but just the whole journey of it, it really did. Awesome. I think with any yeah like if i'm sure as you compete in tennis then you just gain like oh like i hit the sweet spot of the racket like i know mm. what to do next time absolutely absolutely that. yeah and you, you touched on a point about how you at the beginning of your your at the beginning of your journey in pole dancing, you were tensing and you were, and your instructor came up to you and said, why have you got this expression on your face? Mm -hmm. And it actually reminded me, I'm a big ad advocate for yoga as well. And I remember in my yoga class, um, because I feel like I'm a guy, I'm, I'm I've, like, I don't know. I have like this, this masculine energy that I feel like I need to try my absolute hardest to do this. And <laughs> And it's like that energy is is what's causing you to tighten up, and it's what causing you to you want to be loose, and you want to, and you almost want to be like water. I always go back to the great philosopher Bruce Lee and martial artist Bruce Lee. Be like water, you know. Water, you put water into a cup. Water takes the form of cup and of the cup. And I think this is a great idea for life because this is what I'm trying to adapt into my life is to become more like water to become. And we know that when, with water, when it becomes really cold, it becomes ice. So there's still this element of strength towards water, but it can also be something fluid. So this is something that I really adapt into my life. And I'm glad that you mentioned that, that feeling of, um, yeah, we want to move towards gracefulness because that's where I feel you know, we're, I don't know how to explain it, but we're just more efficient, I guess, as human beings. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's an efficiency there. So, yeah. yeah. Let me think. I mean, like some, some of my uh, body movements in a routine goes towards graciousness, but sometimes it really depends on what I'm feeling for that song. Like if it is anger, yeah. then oh. I'm not going to be gracious. I'm going to be like kind of maybe hitting be, the floor oh, okay. or I gotcha. when I go up the pole, I'm not going to try and be slow and, and like make everything look like water. I might actually want to be more like a thunderous movement or um, mm. it, it depends on what emotion I'm feeling or if it's sad, maybe it's more like a whimpering, <laughs> like uh, more of a willow tree <laughs> feeling or, I mean, it really depends on what, what emotion I'm trying to express for the, for the routine. Can I, can we do a willow tree competition? So whoever can okay. do the two. Okay. So, okay. Okay. You go. You, can, you, you, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then what it, we should do at the same time. So we're not trying to bounce off ideas. All right. It's all right. like fully our own. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. I'm wearing my onesie. So that's, that's that. Wait, you just copied the same thing I'm doing. That's not right. I literally just went first. I just thought that was really funny. That that um, 
that the willow tree that's that's pretty that's a really cool idea because i know people who are literally walking willow trees and mm. it's um i guess you don't want to be in that state for too long because it's almost like you want the world to feel sorry for you in a way in a way i don't know um are you a willow tree? what what uh, what character are you what if well you... if i were to pick a character for today i mean today is um i I feel hydrated right now. Okay. So I water. Water. I water. Yourself? Uh coffee. I feel like yeah, I'm co- I'm coffee today. So Yeah, I don't think we're really characters right now. We're just <laughs> liquids. Liquids, yeah. Um Yeah. Um <laughs> Cool. This is a really interesting conversation. I know. Uh, this is, this is, okay. We've really broken. Actually, sorry, we're sorry. Really breaking get, ground here. Breaking ground here. So, well, actually, I was curious. What did did competitive pole, um, did competitive tennis give you more self confidence as the journey mm. went on, or? I actually lost self confidence because I had a lot of bad mm. losses. Yeah, I lost to a kid that was younger than me. So, I think. Look, uh, competition is not for everybody because competition is 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 cutthroat. And if you really want to win, like I'm a very serious competitor on the court and I put my heart and absolute soul into every single yeah. point. And yeah, losing is not a good feel, feeling and not everybody has the same. Sorry, what were, you, what were you going to say? Actually, I was just about to say, um, I was just wanting to dive into that about sure. the feeling of losing. Yeah, because I, I, it, for me, it's a pain. For me, it's like it's in the throat. It's like, uh, I have to. But with time, time heals all wounds. So it's like, yeah, cool. In the next hour or two hours, I'll be up and bouncing and stuff. So it's all good. So, yeah. What? what? I, I just, I feel like the feeling of losing it shouldn't be suppressed or thought of as, oh, I messed up, like. Mm. It, it it's also exciting to know where you need to improve on because you it's That's like true. the feeling of wi- winning is exciting but also the feeling of losing it's not just <laughs> you yeah. do you figure out where things might have fell short or are you just going to be like look how look i i, I missed the ball or in yeah, pole dancing yeah. i i look like I was awkward, like, no, it's, if it's exciting to look at like, oh, okay. Can we figure out what specific points needs to be improved on? Oh, I need to adjust like my wrist on the racket so in order for it to hit the sweet spot yeah. or like what, what exactly is it? We can't just, or, I mean, it would be not so helpful to ourselves if we just overlook and say like oh we messed up but then not even look at exactly where so that we can practice on that and then improve it yeah that's a good point that's a good point i guess emotions take over and yeah from a rational point it's yeah i always i always try and analyze my matches after after the fact and yeah but during the game i'm just actually that's a weakness of mine i become too emotional on the court like if you look at the the best Mm -hmm. tennis players that like federer uh for an example he's just so mm-hmm. cool calm and collected like he, he's like mm-hmm. ice you know and that's mm. i think that's the greatest that's the strongest mindset that you can be in in any competitive arena to be in that cool calm collected and just mm. yeah cool nothing's really phasing me i'm just doing my thing i've practiced hours and hours cool mm-hmm. bring it on you know yeah and actually like speaking of the expressing emotions during the final performance i mean even for myself and I see it for other people when they don't execute their first trick. Well, it it's the, for the rest of the routine, if you don't get over it quickly, then it, oh. it knocks down the, the next trick. And then, and then that knocks down the confidence even more. And then the next trick, and then it knocks down the confidence even more. And I know for me, I'm just like, I mean, when I nail a trick, I'm on stage. I'm like, oh, great. Okay, I'm feeling great. Uh, for the next trick, I'm gonna I'm gonna do great too because I I gain more confidence that one. But then 
for me, it works the opposite direction too. Um, I, I don't get over it quickly on stage within the three minutes I am on stage. So, I, I mean, it's all just like, part of being human if it is an odd thing. just arises. Yeah. We're all odd people way. in a way. Yeah. 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 But so you you you've actually seen firsthand what it's like. Yeah, like I guess you're saying that people are like over emotional or they and they don't quite execute their routine. Is that what you're saying? I mean, myself included. There was yeah. I remember for like that dorky routine, I was supposed to spin really fast on the pole, but then I my setup was incorrect. So then I spun at a regular pace. I'm like, oh, like this is the part of the music. It is, it's going to be like exciting. And I didn't meet that level of excitement. Yeah. And, and so, how, how, how do you prepare for a competition? From, from A to Z, yeah. it would be that th there's quite a bit of steps. I'll walk you through it. So first, just... I'm going to say like my way, I don't know how other people operate, but for me, I think about like, what, like what chapter am I in my life right now? Like what has really been on my mind? Um, like one routine was dedicated to my grandma who had recently passed away. And then as a therapeutic way, I just put my emotions into body movement. And then I created, I, I chose the song. It's, a little, on the gospel side um, there's a simple organ in the background and then a guy singing um, there was these lyrics that that made me choose this song it was love is touching souls and surely you've touched mine so after it's like okay that's the song and from there um, or like my my recent routine uh, dedicated to Black Lives Matter I was just seeing all this stuff on the news and I felt so sad and um, came across the song and um, my friend sang it so beautifully. And um, I was thinking like, yeah, like till we reach that day, we'll never get to heaven till we reach that day. And then um, it's just, okay. So then whatever chapter or emotion that I feel um, during that time. And then from there, I, just the choreographing part is kind of hard uh like i would just see what what movements is something i can do already what movement and then i have a second category that's what movements can i learn within the three or four months i'm training up for this competition and then my third category of all right where are some ideal moves that you really have to work so hard for this. Like you might not get some of this. You might get some of these moves. Um, it's kind of like the dream school and then like the safety school okay. categories. Yeah. And then I practice the moves and just. So you're almost like the master. You're, you're almost like the master of your destiny. You're almost like picking and choosing your routine. And mm. I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, if if I said master, I would have nailed all the yeah. stuff within the dream school category, but I, I usually don't. I usually get like one or two pieces from there of like the list of seven or eight. So then I just piece it together, but also sometimes I have, would have my coach's guidance on it. Um, right. And then afterwards, the, once the routine is kind of constructed, I just keep running that routine to the song again and again and what's your relationship like with your coach oh it's great like actually that's such a good question i feel like i mean this is your biggest support in yep. directly in helping you develop as like a competitive tennis player or a competitive yep. pole dancer it's like yeah. they yeah they're they're super super awesome people i've worked with coaches that um there was one uh person who was on the ellen DeGeneres show i just wow. like, dm'd her i'm like oh my god i saw you on ellen can we work together uh her name is marion crump um and then i work with people who 
I just now that we're in quarantine, then I reached out to people in Russia because I just saw wow. her Instagram. I'm like, okay, I, I've got to work with you. You, but just the way that you operate, I got to kind of dissect how your mind works. There was definitely a bit of a language barrier, but thank God dance is a body movement. So we're, she's able to um, not just, we're not depending off of just having the same language as our grounds. It's like, this is body movement. So is, is there a um, cultural, from a cultural perspective, speaking with Russian, because I know, I know that their upbringing can be very strict in like, I've just seen, this is, this is just a, an example. Like I could be wrong on this, but like, like I've seen, there was this young Polish girl I used to hit with in tennis and her dad was very strict on her, you know, do this, do that. Is that the, is that similar mentality to the Russian pole dancers or not really? Or am I just, I'm just lost. I'm just, I just know that we, we all have the love of of wanting to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So then when I worked with um, my Russian coach, then she, it was just like, we all had that common ground of, yeah just trying to have a good training have good vibes Mm. give the best that we can give um, for our session so yeah and then yeah I I um back to like choreographing then I choreograph part of it but usually it's my coaches who like does the uh, like the final finish to it um right okay yeah or wow. some, or sorry, for some routines, they're the one who choreograph the whole thing for me. So it just, it just really depends on which routine we want to refer to. And do you eat, yeah. do you eat anything specific on competition day? Or do you have a specific diet or anything that you gravitate towards naturally? I used to, I don't <laughs> anymore. I mean, my latest competition, which was uh, done virtually, has been fueled a lot about a lot by Ben and Jerry's because right. pre are you saying I, pre competition or post competition? Pre and post because it just tastes so good. Okay, I couldn't resist. But then before, I used to be all um, eating like the macros of a lot of protein. Then, then I just let my quarantine what's, fluff get to me what's your go, what's your, what, what what's your go-to flavor um it's called boom chakalaka okay so it's got a chocolate cookie core and then half mocha on one side with Ooh. chocolate cookie flakes and chocolate chip and then the other side is vanilla with like little brownie bits so good. that is definitely one of my yeah temptations in life uh, I should I should try it. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm I'm more of a dark chocolate type of guy, and uh, I like uh, there's like there's a place in Melbourne uh, called Messina. Shout out to Messina if you guys are listening, and uh, hey, yeah, Messina, Messina, and uh, get yeah. your discount code today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put uh, in. <laughs> yes, get your discount code. <laughs> um, but no, chocolates, uh, sorry, ice cream is like, is the best. That's, that's my, that's my little treat. I, I love, um, mm-hmm. yeah. What, what's yeah. your, what, what's your favorite food in the whole world? If you could have, if you were on your deathbed, you were about to be executed tomorrow. What would you eat? What did I do? Uh, you, that's my first question. You shot, you, you shot a man for not climbing a pole fast enough. No, so. Oh, no. <laughs> so I would get actually my mom's one of my mom's dishes because I'd say she's hands down the best Vietnamese cook I like I'm so grateful to have and and she I mean actually even during this quarantine I'm I'm here with my parents um and I I came down from Silicon Valley back to home my home in LA to stay with my brother and my parents so then every day have just been like my mom's brilliant cooking I I help her but none of that recipe actually really sinks in my mind it's nothing like even if I were given the same ingredients and the same instructions it never comes out the same way that my mom makes it so I'd say one of my mom's dishes I don't know what but just just bring it on any of them would be great oh actually no there is one I do I do have in my mind it's called gum gachol 
which is uh, catfish and rice. Wow. Yeah. What does catfish taste like? Is it a bit more saltier than normal fish or how would it, you describe the experience? It was, this is, this is not self-development at this point. We're just talking like <laughs> culinary. I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm no we'll, expert. I'm sure we'll, we'll weave our way back to self-development, but we're, we're talking more about experiential, the senses, like, so it's like more, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going off a bit of a tangent now. <laughs> I don't know how, you're, this is a huge leap. <laughs> just going off the senses. Going off the um, senses. Like a, yeah. I would describe the experience as, uh, it's very savory. Um, it, it's, she puts a lot of chili in it, but when I make up maybe a little bit more chili peppers. Um, so spicy, savory, um, I'd say it's closest to a uh, unagi roll, but it's, it, it's got, yeah. I mean, if for anyone that I just say it's closest to being an unagi roll, but instead of eel, it's catfish and minus the seaweed. And how do you, how do you pronounce uh, P-H-O? How do you pronounce that? Pho. P-H-O? Yeah. Oh, oh, fur. Is it, is it, oh, fur. Okay. Yeah, because my Australian accent, I, I always just go pho. So I don't know if that's, yeah, that's, that's not. I mean, as long fho. as if you get your bowl of pho, then, <laughs> then good, good job. Good job. I did well. Uh, yeah. If, yeah, that's definitely some, some good soups, especially if, if it's like in the winter time, which we had a, we had a lot of pho. Very warming. Cool. I know. I want to direct this conversation back to self development. Yeah. I know we were, we were kind of we, we were know, getting we're we were getting carried away in the uh, in that, but that's fine. That's what life is. We we go we go dip, dips and valleys. That's fine. It's that's life. You just you get on stage or on the point. You're like, you know what? I want a burger now. You just uh, walk off stage. Why not? Come back. Now we're uh, coming back. We're coming back. And I'm moving location because the sun. All right. Let's do um a, a word. What's that game? Uh, word association. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna the i I'm gonna say a word and then whatever pops into your head, uh, you can say that. Okay. Um, mindset. Driven. Relationship. <laughs> That's a word. Okay, next. United States. Of America. Instagram. I'm so bait. Oh, this is, this, you gotta cut that one out. That is so boring. <laughs> Instagram. Facebook. It, it's my, my answers are just gonna be so basic. Oh. All right. What about we this? We should have added some, um, and instead of both of us drinking water and coffee here, we should have like, Maybe had a mojito or something. Had a mojito. I, I, I made some margarita last night. That was super good. And um, I think we should have, we could have made this, if this is more of a, like, like a more of a late night uh, um, show, then that would have been more of the case. But here we are with our morning drinks. Morning so, drinks. Are you sure there's no um, vodka in that though? Like, I, I, th I feel like I want to alcohol yeah. test you somehow. No. Nope. I no? would typically get Asian glow, but I don't have it. So this is water. Right. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. So I can we'll do word association with you too. So let's, let's just okay. see how it goes. Okay. Dance. Break dance. Tennis. Roger Federer. Roger. Federer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm pretty okay. bad at it okay but okay. i do have one more game to play with you if you don't mind it's it's uh it's hopefully it's, this doesn't fail it's a it's an it's an improv game okay um let's let's give it a shot because um all right i'm gonna share my screen okay. uh, oh. all right so who want, do you want to go first or do I want to go first? 
Um, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. So, so just like demo what's going on. So what you need to do is I'm going to pull out a new line. So you you basically read this line and that's the emotion. So okay, okay so we'll start again. So um, new line, new emotion. So then, the so then you say, one. but I thought you were going first. Ah, oh, okay. What's that on your arm? A tattoo. Well, where did you get that tattoo from? I, I got it from the shop next door. All right. Maybe can you do one? Wait, you, can you do one on me? Okay. You're going to be what for Halloween? I'm going to be a pumpkin. A uh, pumpkin? A pumpkin, right? I said to my parents, it's been my lifelong dream to be a pumpkin. I, 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 ever since I was a young boy, I've always wanted to be a pumpkin. And I said, mom, one day I'm going to be a pumpkin. And, and she said, sonny boy, you, you, can, you can do it. Well, as your father, I say no. <laughs> Damn you, father. Why have you oh. always been like this to me? Because under my roof, you're under my rules. <laughs> I hate you. Well, I still love you, son. Okay, so <laughs> bear with me. All right, I'm going to cut it, gonna, gonna cut it there. Um, <laughs> all right. I enjoyed that. That, that was... I love uh, improv. Improv's, improv's cool. I hope... Yeah, improv is great. It's, it's definitely very spontaneous. You just never know where the storyline is going to go. It's like as as the characters are being developed and unraveled, you, <laughs> that's where that, it's in real time. All yeah. of that is in real time. I need to practice my improv, actually. So I think it's yeah. I think it's a good skill for life, actually, to be a good improv because, yeah, life is just all one massive improv game. I feel like it's to us to. To a degree, yeah. Yeah, I would. I would think like ninety percent of life is more so how you react to it. Yeah. And then ten percent is just what's given to you. Well, the percentages might differentiate, but the same concept. And what's your? What are you? Is there anything you're working towards? Is there any uh, massive plan or idea you have? what is what is okay what what does your day look like what does your or your year look like it's a very broad question but um <laughs> i want to hear your answer after this too cool <laughs> uh well my 2020 year was a lot of eating a lot of catching up with friends via virtual calls and playing a lot of virtual games with them. Yep. Um, that's how I keep connected now. I've, I mean, just for context, I've only seen four friends each once in person since July, because that's when I moved back to my parents in July. I just want to keep them very safe. Um, a lot of quality time with the family now, learning about like my, my, my parents' escape stories um escape stories just the, yeah because they they're both from vietnam and just learning more about my my family past and history of wow. the, the family tree um yeah i that's actually probably the one of the most one of the positives that came out of this quarantine for me is the amount of quality family time and if I were to be up there, it's just back up in Silicon Valley. I wouldn't have this amount of like precious time with my family. So uh, that's family, mm. friends, self. A lot of still doing virtual competitions and then just I mean, saving money to, to buy a house. So and eating a lot of ice cream, just discovering new flavors. So that's me. Wow. All right. Oh yeah. And then of course my, my career, work in my career job. So 
So you're a professional hitman. Hit, you're a professional hit hit woman, right? That's what is that? Shh. All right. Yeah. Yourself? Uh, I'm just living my best life, just going very intensely in this, into this podcast, and mm-hmm. I really want to please subscribe, and I want to. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just make my most out of it for this podcast. I do have a nine to five job, which is not the most creative job, but this is my creativity. And this is, mm. I like having conversations with people and I like to learn something new about someone. And yeah, it's, they teach me something. I teach them something. So it's, I feel like it's a good, it's a good trade off. So may I ask what you do? I mean, IT. I, oh, IT. Yeah. Yeah. I think actually that's the way I'm like, I, I work my life too, is I like to have my, my stable career job and that, <laughs> oh, why well, are you laughing? Oh no, no, I don't know. It's just something funny. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just like to keep like my creative outlet and then my nine to five separate. Like I have my hobbies of like, I love scuba diving and dancing of, hip hop and pole dancing and yeah. aerial and um, all that good stuff. But then I, I like to have that balance of both so that I, yeah, I just feel like my, my lifestyle operates better that way. So yeah, I, I kind of see the same way. Like for you, it's the creative outlet via podcasting. And I was curious how you got into podcasting. How I got into podcasting. I was actually in podcasting a few years ago and then I, it kind of went away and now it's come back again. I, probably lockdown spurred it on and yeah, I've just really taken a shine to it. I just really enjoy, I really enjoy podcasting. So I've just kept it up now and yeah, it's, it's awesome. So, Wait. Oh, so you got into it during quarantine? Uh, yeah, I got into it during quarantine and it was just like something just to dibble and dabble in because I was on YouTube I was trying to I was making a lot of videos on YouTube and it's very time consuming you got to research your content then you got to shoot then you got to edit and I feel like with podcasting it's it's more organic it's more hey what's happening you know it's it's more of a, an enjoyable experience and I'm getting good feedback from my friends they're watching it and they're mm-hmm. like yeah this is much better stuff than your last your last content was rubbish you know so um Mm -mm. so i mean yeah this is you know i feel like i'm developing myself just by having all these interesting conversations with all these different cool people so i love it you know so Mm. yeah wow that's awesome yeah shout out to your friends hi friends yes rick morty hi guys (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness yeah so um Yeah. Anyway, Ava, it's been a very pleasurable experience to speak with you. Mm-hmm. It's, As uh, you. it's been, it's now 6am my time. Oh my gosh. You, do you usually wake up that early? Uh, I woke up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So right now it's 11am uh, my time. That's a beautiful, that's a nice time. That's a nice time to be alive. Yeah a nice time to be alive yeah so that means it's monday for you sunday for me it's a monday for me yeah yeah and i guess would you like people to connect with you would you like my audience to connect with your instagram or at all or do you want people to find you on the internet or yeah yeah yeah, that's fine the on on my instagram would be good so yeah you can just go ahead and Check out my Instagram if you feel like it. If you don't, then continue eating ice cream. And great. How can people follow you though? What's what's your hand? What's your name? What's your username? It's oh my goodness, which is spelled with a zero in the front, not an O, because O was already taken. H M A I goodness. Goodness. Goodness gracious me. All right. Well, cool. That's yeah, it's been awesome speaking with you. And um Please, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the Christian Buddy Podcast as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks for having me.